So, uh, many of you just, you know, came and told me, okay, hi, Jenny, so I believe you all know me. Or, you know, if you, ha if you don't, so probably you can just go and see in LinkedIn. There's no point giving an introduction, seriously. Um, so, I'm into media industry, and um, I work with Viacom 18. And as a, uh, if, you, if you don't know Viacom 18, but I believe you will be knowing MTV, and you must be knowing Big Boss. So those are our productions. Currently, we are running Spitzbilla, Sunny Leone. So that's all our productions. And uh, I mean, that's how you should associate uh, Viacom 18 uh, with. We also have a digital arm called Boot. And uh, many of the analytics, you know, the reason why suddenly media industry required to do analytics because they all of a sudden when the digital arm of those media industries started, they started getting an enormous amount of data all of a sudden. Before that, they only had bark data, which is based on 20,000 to 30,000 samples. And beyond that, they cannot even assume that there could have been any data. So all of a sudden, when they got that, you know, every day, couple of million people coming and, you know, browsing their app, watching content, they suddenly found, oh, wow, what do I do with this? And that's exactly where media industry, particularly in India, started investing in data science. And it's a very good junction, even if, you know, many of you guys are in different industries. I must say media currently is media, sports, and probably healthcare are some of those industries where data science is going to grow really in a very different way. That is the emerging industry. And I think this is the best time to be in the media industry and in data science. So I just wanted to give you, you know, a few glimpses. And whenever I speak to people, the first question they ask, how do you connect science with entertainment? Like ideally, we're creating some product, some sessions, some episodes, and, you know, some movies. How are people going to, you know, use science into it? Now, basic science, like, you know, customer uh, analytics, revenue analytics, those are there. Those you will find in any industry. You go to retail, e-commerce banking, telecom, any industry you go, you will have those things. The biggest difference in media industry that you don't get anywhere else is the content analytics. So if you are a person who loves to work on the new days toolkits like speech recognition, video breakdown, or the video analytics, um, you know, um, like of uh, face recognition, those kind of stuff, text analytics, all those kind of stuffs you will be able to do in the media industry. And that's where the beauty of media industry, this kind of work is almost not possible in any other industry. Sports is, of course, coming up, and that's another place where it is, you know, very different use of analytics and data science will happen. But media is a very, very, very new one. I, and th this, is, this is actually a joke. Before we start the use of science, this is the abuse of science that has happened. Um, so how many of you remember a movie called Ravana that was made in Telugu first, and then it was remade in Hindi? And there was a sequence where there was a song that Bahne De, Mujhe Bahne De. And then someone thought that they can actually translate, run a subtitle of this song, right? And can you tell me the craziest subtitle that happened out of this? Yes. <laughs> so it actually came out to me because the way <laughs> they realized Bahne is connected to sister, they is give. So they translated it, give sister, give me your sister. <laughs> so yes, I mean, if you don't do science good enough and if you think the basic translation or transcription you know, work can happen, this is the kind of you know, challenges that you are going to face. And this is running on national TVs with this kind of subtitle and actually going to international. Imagine peop what people will understand from this song or about the movie. <laughs> um, so as I told, like, you know, earlier it was a more big screen media. Today it has all came to our pocket. And more it has came to our pocket, the data actually increased. And it has increased exponentially. It didn't increase uh, in a linear fashion. So data science in media industry almost touches every nooks and corners of this uh, business. I'll just give you a few glimpses in different uh, you know, six uh, sections where it does. 
as I told you, marketing, you know, it's mostly customer related analytics that you do anywhere else, consumer lifetime value, acquisition, all those stuff. On the ad sales is actually something very similar to who, who of you work in a supply chain kind of uh, domain. Like how do you design the right route map for a Ola cab is something you can actually go back and apply in the media industry also in terms of when you are selling the ad spots. So what, what we sell actually in media and what earns us money, the way we sell our ad positions. So how many ad I should put at the starting of the program, how many mid-roll ads, like in the middle of the program I should put, how do I even design the pricing around that? How do I distribute and sell the consumer profile? All those things require a huge amount of optimization work that is you know, required to do, which is very similar to supply chain kind of work. So if you know you people are working on supply chain, that is a very ad, ops, ad optimization is a very big domain in the media industry. The biggest work is happening around the content creation and content curation. And that is exactly where I'll give you some examples and the use cases, and those are real life use cases that we have done in Viacom IT. So what we are doing is, we are working, we are building AI models which will help us determine how to green light a content. So what is a green lighting? So this, this is a very you know, typical terminology in media industry, they say content green lighting. In most media organizations, like you go to Star, Z, Sony, Viacom 18, anywhere, there will be a bunch of people whose job is every day just sit and watch the different movies, different contents, listen to the different storytelling by the writers, looking through the screen written things, all those stuff. That's what their job. Every day they are paid to watch movies because they watch those or listen to those stories and come back and decide by their judgment whether we should produce those stories, convert those into a full-fledged movie or a series or a web series or whatever we want to do. Now that has a 100% human bias. And that is the reason why they believe this movie will do good, but it doesn't, right? On the other hand, at times, they believe that this movie may not do as good, but at time, you know, it will just do a box office hit. Um, so we are trying to create an AI-driven model which will ideally, given a very detailed screenplay written, will tell us what is the probability of the success of that if we convert into it. That will also tell me, therefore, how much I should uh, you know, use for the production cost of that particular piece and how much I should not spend beyond which my profitability will not be there. Therefore, who are the cast I should choose? What are the prices I should pay to those cast? If I choose cast A versus, you know, actor A versus actor B, what is the success rate can be? So all these kind of things we are trying to build it. We are also, so whom to cast? How do I design the dialogue? We are even working with the narrators who are writing all the detailed dialogue. So the way, you know, a story is completely full-fledged done, First comes a simple narrative like a basic story. From that, someone writes a screenplay. So screenplay means it decides, okay, these are the different scenes. This scene will be shot in this kind of section. These are the different people. These are the basic story. Then moves, it goes to a dialogue writer who actually fits in between and write every person's dialogue inside. And then it goes to the movie producer, movie directors, or whoever are producing and directing those to ideally decide the final thing. What happens is when the screenwriters are writing it versus when the actual cinematographer or the videographer is shooting it, they change many things on the spot because what is written and assumed is not looking good on the spot. So they change it. So ideally what has been thought through versus what actually comes out, you will find close to 40 to 50% difference between them. We are actually trying to help these people that what kind of dialogue fitment is going to help you. Um, how do you do the talent management? For example, very recently you have found that Netflix has been trolled because of Radhika Apte. That all the stories that's coming around are of Radhika Apte. Now I'm sure they have done some kind of AI where they found that 
or, or I mean most of the movies or you know web series that they do of Radhika Apte has picked up very well. Particularly they did a series of Rabindranath Tagore story by Radhika Apte where most of those stories she was the uh, you know lead protagonist and therefore they come up with that we can actually go and sign a contract with her for a long time and we can produce many many series. Now they can absolutely go and do that but how do you publish? Do you publish immediately one after another like after some time people will say no more Radhika Apte, now that's not good. So you can produce those but probably time timely publish them so that you know you have multiple I mean many other stories and not just too much of Radhika Apte. It's like if I continuously keep you feeding chocolate after some time you will stop loving chocolate right. So it's the same thing. So how do you actually choose and do the right talent management there? What kind of licensing and contracting we should do? Um, content editing. So this is another place we are actually working on artificial intelligence. And so suppose you know we have Big Boss. Now in the Big Boss house there are 50 cameras continuously following all the participants there, all the contestants there. What you see on the TV is only one hour or one and a half hour content. Now there are 50 cameras has so many different other contents that already there which are ideally thrown off. Can I actually create different storylines which are like back of the scene which are not shown on the TV and how do I create that based on what we understand from what has been already shown on the TV or what has already been published, what section of the stories people are watching, re-watching or not watching. And based on that, ideally strategize what should be those, you know, other cuts that we should create. Or suppose we have a, say, 10 hours long content. I want to produce a very short highlight of that, which will be packed within 45 minutes. How can I create that? We are even experimenting now to give the, gamify all this thing where we will give the power to the hand of audience. We will, it's like, you know, how do you cook a recipe? You have all the ingredients, you know which masala to be put, you know which all, how it should be put and then the final product comes. It's the exactly same way if I tell you these are the protagonist, these are the different emotions you can mix, these are the different actions you can mix, you choose and you create your own highlight on the spot. And artificial intelligence will be able to cut those kind of things for you and create your own specific highlight. So where it will no more remain, Big Boss what I want to show you, you craft your own Big Boss, right? So these are, I mean I won't say that all of them are 100% done now, many of them are as a POC, pilot, those stages, but we have found a huge success while doing this. Um, content licensing, it's a small work where we talk about when we are licensing content and not really creating those contents uh, ourselves. Or should I do that like you know buy a perpetual license or do I actually buy a short term license and then sell it back to somebody else. Content publishing is purely based on the recommendation engine and you know how do you publish, when do you publish, to whom do you publish. Um, customer satisfaction I won't go much but product design is again another thing very important for any app based technologies whether it's a food tech or it's an e-commerce or anything because easiness of navigating that app is always helps consumer stickiness and help consumer to come back to that app again and again. So how do we make sure and understand what are the struggle points that consumers are getting through and how can I keep on removing those struggles and make that app lighter, easier and you know people will start loving it. So that's where the product analytics is, uh, product design is very helpful. I will quickly uh, uh, you know, take you through a couple of things we have done. So generally so far Voot Analytics has, oh, sorry Voot has always produced web series which are six to nine episode long, not really 40 episodes like Netflix. So what we tried to check is how much people binge watch, do people at all binge watch and when I release this series, is it good to release all the episodes at a time or is it good that by story I break it down and people can just come and you know snag those content over the time and then I keep on publishing probably every week in a certain interval. What we have found is people love to binge watch in India but there are different categories of people and how do they binge watch. 
So a 40% people, 4 out of 10, binge watch the whole series at a time. And you know, these people mostly watch it by the midnight, like that their clock starts around 11 and ends by around 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. So on our consumption pattern, we find a huge jump at that time. So there's a good bunch of consumers. The moment it is published, they just start, complete it at one go, and then close it. There is another bigger bunch who actually watch it in a one hour long period. So don't watch together at one sitting, but they will, you know, break it, break it. They mostly watch by the afternoon time. These are the people, you know, either they are shopkeepers. And what we thought, they, what we first hypothesized, this might be the people who are housewives and by the afternoon time, they have lots of time when they can watch it. We were surprised that 80% of these people are male and we found that, okay, how is that possible? So then we found these are the people mostly who are the shopkeepers or taxi drivers or those people who do not have much work during the afternoon time and when they're actually watching it. Even when they are sitting in their shop, they don't have uh, much customers, so they are actually sitting and watching at that time. And therefore, their work comes in interval, they keep on watching you know, as they are finding time. So therefore, they don't watch at a time, that three hours kind of thing, but they watch over uh, one day, they close it, they complete it. Then there is a bunch of people that generally take one to two days. And these are the people when they take one to two days are weekend watchers. So even if I publish something by Wednesday, they don't come and watch immediately. A search comes during the weekend. When they go back, check what all new thing has come during the week, they will only watch during the weekends, and they will close it. The last ones, they take longer time, more than two days. And these are the people who are mostly commuters. So suppose you are in a train or metro or in bus, you download these contents and watch as you go. And these are the people therefore take more longer time because they only have those commute time and therefore they are using those time to watch, they take longer time. Uh, for some of them, yes, because otherwise we had no other way to understand who they are. And if we just would have you know, thought our hypothesis right, we would have stuck that these people are uh, housewives, the, mid the, the second group. But when we found they are male, then we thought that, okay, what is happening? Like, who are these people? Because it's not possible in office during lunch hours, you are sitting and watching you know, some content. It's generally not possible in office. So then we did some survey in the bigger cities, the smaller tower to towns, and there we found, yes, these are the people who are doing it. And then the hypothesis that when we should publish. So we found a sure thought answer that we should publish all the series at a time. The biggest reason is otherwise the continuity of watching the content breaks. And it takes a lot more marketing money to bring those people again back next week to the same story because people by that time somebody else might have launched a new show and people already move out of the old episode. So it's better to launch them. And also the dotted line is the completion rate. So what percentage of the content gets completed? If I launch them at a time, it's like really shoots up to 90, 95% and stays there if I launch them all at a time because of the binge watch. If I launch them, I mean, in a, in a blocks, it doesn't happen. It actually has a break. Now, this is an interesting story where we found that most of the originals that we launch from first to second, there always is a drop. But those who already come and watch the second episodes, they will almost, you know, 85 to 90% complete the whole series. For all of a sudden, one of the original we found a huge decline. First episode was getting a record number of people, and surprisingly, second episode, the conversion was very, very bad. And it was drastically bad. So the question was, what do we do? Should we market? The first point always is, okay, chalo, go and send notification. Come and see the second one. But that doesn't help. There has to be some natural conversion from episode one to episode two. And we said there has to be something wrong in the episode one, why people are dropping. We have to figure out their drop off point. So we went and analyzed people every session level data that where they started from the content, how much they watched, where they paused, where they scrubbed. So scrubbing means you are first forwarding the scene from which part they are watching and beyond which they are not watching. Now either if you are dropping off, then I know that around that point you are not liking the content. 
Or if you are scrubbing, I know that portion is becoming boring, therefore you are not working. So when we analyzed those details, we clearly found, and we plotted them as a heat map, we clearly found there are three sections where the biggest boredom is happening on that first episode. And you know, almost all the 80% people who are dropping are dropping around those places. We went back and watched the content exactly at those periods, and we realized why it is happening. We watched it along with the content people who are creating those content or editing the content. So we said, go and re-edit. So they re-edited the first episode, relaunched the whole episode once again with the re-edited first uh, uh, episode, and we found almost a 23% uplift in the conversion compared to where it was dropping. Um, just to keep in time, we are doing many more things in terms of we are breaking down the videos. Now, Microsoft, Google, or Amazon has good APIs, and there are other more intelligent APIs through which we can break down the videos and create lots of meta tags or AI-generated meta tags, which otherwise not possible. For example, who are the protagonists playing at that level? What are the emotions of each of the protagonists? What is the kind of scene? Is it a bedroom scene? Is it an outdoor scene? Is it a you know, sitting room or a kitchen scene? Those kind of stuffs. We are also checking that, you know, what are the storytelling around that? All those things putting together. What is the color palette that has been used there? The protagonists who are present, what percentage of the whole pixel size that they are actually present? Is it a back face? Is it a side face? Is it a front face? All those kind of stuff, and you know, connecting that with the viewership that we get at every nanosecond uh, viewership, we are connecting with that, and getting some very interesting, you know, understanding that what is happening, why some percent, some people are watching certain section, why some people are not watching. How can I reduce? If in an episode there are lots of certain kind of emotions which people are not enjoying, or a very flat kind of uh, episode, chances are very low that people will come back for the next episode. So how can I remove those things? Ideally, helping the narrator, or a screenwriter, or a dialogue writer to change those kind of sequences. So this is actually from one of our regional uh, content. This is a long uh, series where we found that so. so these are the same person, this is the same uh, character. And if there are more negative situation, like you know, the person who is against her and literally hitting her, making her cry, the viewership somehow increases up pretty significantly. Whereas if she is happy and you know nothing happening, people are like, I take nothing happening. <laughs> um, then we found that, you know. When certain uh, protagonist is coming for a longer duration, people are switching. People are switching from that either on the TV, and this is where we are actually mixing the digital data on top of the TV information. So this is something a very big breakthrough we have worked on to establish a very common currency between digital and TV about the measurement. And this was a very tough job, but we still have done it. And we can actually now see on the TV because TV, actually, you know that when people have moved after that one minute, even though the granularity is one minute, but you still know it. And on the digital also, now we can exactly map those, and we can see where people are dropping off or switching their uh, uh, observation. Yes, yes. Um, so then we have also found that, you know, what is the collaboration between the hero and the heroine of that, and, you know, what kind of emotions or situations are working. When both of them are probably in a very simple situation, going shopping or other things, people are not so interested. When they're talking about, you know, see the daughter-in-law talking about the mother-in-law to the husband, and you know, people suddenly start <laughs> checking that, okay, what's happening? And you know, if there is a negative uh, sentiments. The best part we have found is there are lots of, apart from the main hero and heroine, there are lots of peripheral artists also in that. Now, those peripheral artists are actually playing a very important role in that story, but if they are only alone, it doesn't make, it doesn't give a uplift. But in combination of those with some other person gives actually a bigger uplift in terms of viewership, in terms of stickiness, and also certain kind of emotions. So what we are doing is we are checking at the first level is about the cast, 
the combination of multiple cast, combination of cast along with their emotion and sentiment, and the fourth level combination of cast along with the location of the shoot plus the story and the sentiment and the emotion of the people. All these things put together, what's the, what's the actual recipe that has cooked and what is the uplift that we can see. And that's how we are helping our content curation team to actually curate a better content. And this is what we are doing not as a post facto. This is when actually the series is already running. Every day, 30 minutes it comes. So as we are learning, we are continuously giving the feedback. And in our you know, industry, mostly the shoot happens, like when it is airing on TV, probably the shoot has completed just two days back. So you really have good amount of time to go back and give the feedback that, okay, you should need to change the story lining on this side. The story that you have started, people are not picking it up on that. Probably you need to change. You will find lots of sudden change, you know, all of a sudden a character dies or something happens because they found that character is actually not working well for them or actually the face change happens, right? So for like, for example, Balika Badu when happened, there was a face change that happened, right? So lots of these things are happening based on this uh, analytics behind. So thank you so much. I think I'm, I have overdone the time. Okay, I'm so sorry. So any questions, see, I'm here. You can ask, should we take any question now or later? We won't be able to take any questions right yeah. now. But uh, if you want to ask any questions, you can be around at night. Yeah, so today I'm around. I'm here in this hotel. You can just call me, WhatsApp me, like me, LinkedIn. I'll be always happy to answer. Yes. <laughs>